Hello and welcome to the project two. In this project, we are going to dockerize an Apache web server. As you can see, this diagram represents the architecture of a dockerized Apache web server. At the top of the diagram, we have a web browser, which is used by the user to interact with a web server. When the user sends HTTP request to the web server, it is received by the Docker container running the Apache web server. The Docker container is running on the Docker host, which is a machine that runs the, the Docker engine. The Docker engine communicates with Docker API, which is used to manage containers and images. The Docker engine manages the container lifecycle, including creation, start, stop, and deletion of containers. The Docker container to the, to the Apache web server is responsible for handling incoming HTTP requests and returning the appropriate responses. The Apache web server listens on specific port for incoming requests, processes the request, and returns to the response to the web server. Container networking is used to allow the Apache web server running in the Docker container to communicate with a web browser running on the host machine. The Docker engine manages the container networking, allowing the web server to receive incoming requests and send outgoing responses. In summary, the Dockerized Apache Web Server project uses Docker containers to isolate the Apache Web Server and its dependencies from the host machine. This provides a more consistent and reliable development and, de and deployment environment, while also making it easier to manage and scale the web server. So what are the key takeaways from this project? So what are we going to learn after completing this project too? Well, first thing is isolation. Docker containers provide an isolated environment for running an Apache web server, ensuring that it's not impacted by any changes to the host system or other applications running on the same machine. Secondly, consistency. By packaging the Apache web server and its dependencies into Docker container, developers can ensure that the application runs consistently across the different environments, such as development, staging, and production. Thirdly, reproducibility. The Docker images are portable and can be easily shared with others, making it easy for developers to reproduce each other's work. Fourth is scalability. Docker containers can be easily scaled horizontally to handle increased traffic by deploying multiple instances for the same container. Fifth one is security. Docker containers are more secure than traditional servers because they provide an isolated environment for running the Apache web server, making it harder for the attackers to compromise the host machine or other applications running on it. Last one is flexibility. Docker provides a flexible platform for building, deploying, and managing applications, allowing developers to choose the best tools and technologies for their needs. I'm going to use Visual Studio Code for this project since VS Code has a Docker extension that makes it even easier to manage Docker containers and images. So like I said in the previous video, try it as an assignment before going through it with me in the next video. So good luck and I will see you in the next lecture. All right, let's get started doing project two on dockerizing an Apache web server. Like I said in the previous video, we are going to use Visual Studio Code for this project too. And as you can see, I have already opened my VS Code editor and created project two folder. So before moving on, I would highly recommend you to install Docker extension in the extensions page. As you can see here, click on these extensions and search Docker. And if you have not already installed this extension, please go and click on install. And as soon as you are done, you can just click exit and then we can start uh, moving on. So as you can see, I don't have any folder. Now I'm going to basically here create a new folder, new folder, and let's name it project, project two. 
and uh, simply I'm going to drag and drop inside the VS Code. And so now we can start creating our Docker file. So let's create a new file, name it, click on this new file and name it like Docker file. Click on that. And one more thing before moving on, uh, just click go to the settings and click on settings. And when you go to the setting, you will see that the auto save on the Visual Studio code. Click on that and change it to on focus change because what it does is that an editor with changes is automatically saved when the editor loses focus. So it will basically save everything you re write automatically. So you don't have to press Ctrl C whenever or click on file and say every time you change something. All right. So we can start running the like entering the Docker file. So first command is from and the base image would be Ubuntu latest. Well, this command specifies the base image to use for building Docker image. So in this case, we are using this Ubuntu operating system as a base image. And then we need to run the command like apt get update and then uh, and apt get install uh, dash y not to ask a question apache 2 right so here we are installing the apache web server onto the ubuntu base image the the run command executes a shell command inside the docker container during the build process and in this case, uh, it updates the package list and installs the Apache 2 package using the apt pa apt apt get uh, package manager. So the next one is expose. And as you can see, every time I'm writing the Docker file commands, uh, Visual Studio Code is automatically detecting and giving me suggestions because we have just enabled the extension. Uh, you can also see this extension on the left uh, bottom here. You can see the Docker. Once we like push the, the the Docker file and create a container, I'm going to show that. So let's click on now expose and we need to enter the port. So in this case, uh, I would enter 80. So the Docker container will listen on port 80, which is default port for Apache web server. However, this command does not actually publish the port on the host machine to the host machine. It simply documents the uh, container will use the port 80, all right? So the next command is cmd. And after that, let's just create, uh, open the square bracket brackets. And inside that, let's open the quotation mark. And inside the quotation mark, we need to write Apache 2 CTL, comma, quotation mark, dash D, comma, quotation mark, and then we need to write foreground, foreground, right? So this command specifies the default command to run when the Docker container starts. In this case, we are using the Apache 2 CTL command with the, the dash D foreground option, which starts the Apache web server in the foreground and allows the container to run as a main process. And also it ensures that Container does not exit immediately after starting and that it continues to run until it's manually stopped or terminated. So once we are done with Docker file, um, we need to go to the terminal and click on new terminal and make sure we are in the right directory. So we are inside a, the project two. So here we are going to run the Docker build uh, command, Docker build dash t and then you have to give the name for the image uh, let's say i'm going to give my apache image and space dot right don't forget to enter the dot and let's click on enter and as you can see it's uh it's really fast because we have a really small image uh, we have really small commands and installations. So once we are done, uh, we need to run the Docker container. So before running the 
Docker container, I would like to show you this image. Just go to the Docker, click on this Docker extension. And here you can see we have uh, two images. This one I have just pulled before in the first project. And this one is just we have uh, created using a Docker file, right? Now, as you can see, we don't have any containers. So I'm going to create a new container using this uh, image. So for that, um, uh, we need to run the following command. Uh, docker run dash p, which means port 80, 80. And the name of the image, my Apache image, right? My, the name of the, just make sure you enter the right image, my Apache image, and let's click on enter. And this will start a new, the container. You can see here the container, all right? So, so we need to run the, so as soon as we are done with the running the container, we need to verify the Apache web server. So we can verify it by opening a web server and navigating to the local host. And you should see the Apache default page. So let me open the, uh, my browser and here I'm going to run local host. Click on enter. And as you can see, we have Apache 2 default page. So congratulations, in this project, you have successfully uh, dockerized Apache web server. Um, just uh, just as a uh, recommendation, just review what we have done and practice on your own. And I will see you in the next lecture.